Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium, where we're going to talk about discrete and continuous random variables. So let's get to it. To kick things off, let's actually start with an experiment. The experiment is pretty simple. You need to just take a pen and paper, walk outside, and just do some people watching. And every time a person walks past you, you want to take note of their hair color as well as some approximation of their height. So let's say that now person one walks past you. They have brown hair. And their approximate height, if you eyeball it, looks 165 centimeters. Now, let's say some time has passed and now another person walks by you. We'll call them person two. And let's say this person has black hair and their height eyeballing it looks like 160 centimeters. And like this, you will document the height of every person that walks past you, let's say for about 10 minutes or so. And that is one experiment. And so with this experiment, we now have a set of observations. And when we have some observations with some data, we can ask some questions. So let's start asking some questions. So for one, what's really interesting here to note is, well, how many people actually walked past you during the experiment? And um, probably another interesting question to note would be since we have some height information, what was the average height of people who passed you? Now to answer these questions, I'm going to introduce a little bit of mathematical notation here. So let's say that the number of people who walked past you is 10 people. So that is going to be the outcome of this one experiment. I'm going to call that outcome omega one and omega one is going to be 10 people. And I'm also going to introduce a random variable for this question. I'm going to call it X one. Now, random variables are functions that map the outcome of an experiment to some actual measurable quantity. So it's a function, so I'm gonna write in brackets omega one because it's a function that takes in an outcome and it will now give us some, some value, uh, some measurable value. And in this case, well, since 10 people passed us, we're gonna map it to the integer value 10. Now let's do the same for the second question over here. What is the average height of people who passed you? I'm going to represent the outcome of this as omega two. And let's say that it was 165.32 centimeters. Now we're gonna introduce now another random variable X two, which like I said before is a function which will take in this outcome and then return a value, an integer or a floating point or some real number value that can be measured. Now, what's very cool with random variables in general is that they map some outcome of an experiment to some measurable value. And when we have measurable quantities, we can actually perform some sort of mathematics on them. Like typically they're used in terms of like creating probability distribution functions and understanding the behavior of, well, these values and how they could be different with different experiments. Now that is like a, a whole mouthful of arguments and like probability distribution functions is itself a topic for another video, which I'll have up very soon. But in the meantime, though, we want to actually understand what are the kinds of random variables that we can have. It really depends on the types and the number of values that they can take. And 
we have like this, which is like an integer value. This is like a count over here. And this x2 over here is like a measurement. And because of that, counts are typically discrete random variables. Measurements are continuous random variables. So that's kind of the whole gist of this entire picture. But let's actually pick this apart um, individually. So discrete random variables and then continuous random variables. So let's get to that. Now, before moving forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Coursera. So videos like this are very mathematical and I can't include all the mathematical detail as I would. I talk about how this math is useful in machine learning, but if you do wanna know more about the rigorous mathematics itself, I do recommend certain courses on Coursera. So for example, you can check out the Mathematics for Machine Learning course by Imperial College of London, where they have three courses in a specialization they offer. On top of that, you can also check out an advanced statistics course by John Hopkins University. And I'll link all of these in the description down below of really interesting courses that I think are worth it. If you're not interested in just the mathematics and you want to go towards more in the practical machine learning and deep learning space with some integration of mathematics, I have also listed some recommended courses down in the description below. It helps you because you get a seven day free trial with amazing knowledge. And it also helps me because I do get some kickback and it supports me on this channel and helps me make more videos like this. So if you please, do like these videos please do consider checking out the courses down in the description i know you won't regret it and with that let's get back to the video Alrighty, so here's a definition that i've taken a screenshot of from one of my blog posts on medium so please do check that out it'll be down in the description below but a random variable is discrete if it can take on a finite number of values or a countably infinite number of values so some key, key terms here is like, well, a random variable. And it is, well, random variables, they can take on a finite number of values or a countably infinite number of values. So let's talk about these. Now, first, I'm gonna consider the random variable that we said was discrete in the experiment that we performed. And I'm gonna explain also why it is discrete. So x1 of omega one. So recall that X one is going to be <clears throat> the number of people who walk past you during this experiment. Now, in our case, it was 10, but had we conducted this experiment, you know, differently or a number of times, it could have been almost any value. And specifically, it would have been some value that would have been, maybe we would have seen zero people or one people or two people or three people or some, maybe any number of people in this case. So that would be the random variable though, would correspond to, you know, measurable quantities. So it'd be zero, one, two, three, four, and well, so on, honestly. And this is going to be the set of all possible values that we could have seen during our experiment. Now, what's interesting here is that we have this random variable on lock. Now, if it can take on a finite number of values or a countably infinite number of values. So in this case, well, how many people can actually be a part of the set? Well, this could go on until well, let's say that you live on a, this busiest street in the world where virtually every human being could have crossed you in that 10 minute span. In which case, it could theoretically be as high as 8 billion, which is about the population of the world. Now, this number is, it is, you know, it's a finite set in itself, right? It has 8 billion values or 8 billion and one values. And so it is finite. And because it is finite, well, we know that we can say that x1 is a discrete random variable. Now, let's try to alter this case a little bit and just say that, you know, we don't know the number of people in this world. And honestly, there is an infinite number of people in this world, theoretically. So instead of just being 8 to the 9, it could have been maybe infinity or some value that just goes on forever. But even in this case, this set here 
represents a countable set. And why it represents a countable set is because it is a subset of the set of all natural numbers. Natural numbers themselves, the set of natural numbers is a countably infinite set. It is countable in the sense that each of these values are separated, but it is also infinite in the sense that the cardinality of this set could be an infinite number of values. So you can kind of almost restructure this definition to just be a random variable it is discrete if it is countable. If, let me just say, let's cancel all of this and just say, if, let's take our trusty red pen over here and say, if it is countable. And this term is very important. And that kind of describes uh, discrete random variables in a nutshell. So I hope this definition makes sense. And I think you can also see where else you can apply this in other kinds of experiments. Maybe you can conduct your own fun little experiments. Like it could be flipping of a coin. Now coins can take in heads or tails or zero and one. Maybe you can map it to. It is a finite number of values it can take. Hence, if a random variable that represents the outcome of a flip of a coin, it is a discrete random variable. The same can be said about rolling of a dice. So I hope the concept of discrete random variables is clear. Now let's move on to continuous random variables. All right, so a random variable is continuous if it can take on an uncountable number of values. So keywords are random variable is continuous if it can take an uncountable number of values. So for example, in this case, let's, we already introduced a random variable um, in our experiment called x2 of omega2. And this represents the average height of people in our experiment. So let's actually try to write this set out. Um, it can be, what are the possible values that this could take? It could have been, in our case, it was 165.32. But had we conducted it, maybe it could have been maybe differently or in another way, it could have been very well 166, um, maybe 167, and so on. But we can also have some more values, right? So it could have been 165 point in between these two, like some 5, 7, 165.58, and so on. But even here, we have number, it could have also been a value that lies between 165.57 and 165.58, like 165.5738244, whatever it is. Those are all possible values that could be the value of our random variable x2. And this here is, well, first of all, it is an infinite set of values. There can be an infinite number of terms that could have been a possible value. And more importantly, there's always going to be some value that lies between any two subsequent values of x2 that you think it can take. And because now it takes this infinite number of values and an uncountable number of values, by definition, we can say that x3 is a continuous random variable. So this is great to see, but like generally, like what are the actual like physical quantities in this world that would be representative of continuous random variables? They are typically measurements. So for example, height or age, these are values that can kind of be almost any real number. They can take on any uncountable number of values. And so random variables are continuous if it can represent some measurement. Now, I didn't cross anything out here because there may be certain caveats to, to what measurement represents. You know, there are some variables like, let's say, pricing that may be a little hard to, to bucket as being discrete or continuous because price is technically chopped off at cents. 
But if you look at you know stock market prices where you see like fractional cents, that is a good idea of an analysis where, oh, it makes sense that, well, if a random variable represents a price in a stock market, it should be a continuous random variable over you know discrete, where it could be like the price of, I don't know, a house or a loaf of bread. Overall, what you could use as a tool to determine whether a variable should be continuous or discrete is what kind of analysis you want to perform on it later. So if you are interested in certain, you know, analyses that regard that are related to like probability that, you know, some value lies between a certain interval, like, okay, what is the probability that uh, the, I don't know, the, the, the price of a house is greater than $300,000 or less than, you know, a million dollars. Now, what is that probability in this interval? It might make sense that, well, if you're only dealing with intervals, you deal with continuous random variables. But if you're dealing with like exact values, for example, like what is the probability that a house is exactly, I don't know, $678,000? In this case, well, that, it, that actually might be a non-zero value, but um, how often you actually perform that analysis or whether you perform that analysis are at all is, well, up to you. And so depending on your use case, some instances of distinguishing between continuous and discrete random variables can be a little iffy, but I hope that this overall understanding does make sense. Now, I have an entire blog post that talks about this application of continuous and discrete random variables in machine learning. So if you are interested in that, please do check it out in the description down below. And please do subscribe to me on Medium as well as here on YouTube for more fun videos. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.